Hi, I'm Sarah Hess. Uh, I'm supervising producer. And I am also Sarah Hess, <laughs> supervising producer. Actually, I'm Liz Friedman, uh, co-executive producer. We get mistaken for each other on a regular basis. Which I'm sure which makes a lot of sense. We don't look anything like each other. I don't know, but everyone know. thinks... That. I get called Liz at least once a week by people who have known me for six years on this show. Uh, well, I was going to say it's a totally reasonable mistake. I mean, we really... <laughs> Look a lot alike. Oh. Anyway, I mean, we wrote episode 15 than, together. Yes, we did. Which is called bo Bombshells. <laughs> this was originally pitched as... It, it wasn't our idea to right. do it. It was sort of we were in the writer's room and everyone was sort of talking about We knew that House and Cuddy were going to have to break up and what sort of episode was that going to be and how are we going to do it. It was originally sort of in the writer's room thrown around as a sliding doors situation, right. which was going to be like Cuddy envisioning, envisioning various different futures that she might have with House, which we right. ended up not doing. But. And, inter and sort of the idea of doing, could you do our show <clears throat> as a different genre? And the initial idea was, could you do it that, you know, change, change genres every act? Like there might be an act that was animated and an act that was a sitcom and an act that was a black and white movie. The answer turned out to be no. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that was... Um, <laughs> Too, maybe too much uh, difference. It was actually the, the, the episode so nuts that we really felt once we got into it that we really had to have a salt like the underpinning of a regular medical case and sort right. of put it very much in a realistic world as opposed to just you, you needed sort of an anchor I think to hold down all the crazy stuff that was happening. Right. So we're doing an ordinary episode of House. Oh, and then by the way, also, we're doing five. <laughs> completely different shows. Like, we made a big list of stuff that it would be cool to do a house scene in the style of. Then it became about what, you know, what can we tie into the story and what's also just the coolest thing imaginable. You know, I started my career working for Sam Raimi. I'm a huge horror film fan. I'm a huge Evil Dead fan. So when it came a chance to do, you know, House's version of Evil Dead, I was so in. She had to show me clips on the YouTube, but I was, I've never... She still doesn't understand <laughs> no, what I, they are zombies, and why, why Bruce Plants Campbell... Plants vs. Zombies, awesome. Yeah, she doesn't understand why Bruce Campbell would have to have a chainsaw on his hand, which anyone who's seen the movie understands that what else would you do if you had all those zombies to battle? I didn't, I didn't, but, but it was cool. <laughs> yes. So when we got there to shoot the Butch and Sundance stuff, it was incredible because they had all the guys dressed as the Bolivian army. This was on the Universal back lot. They have a whole western town. Right. There that's sort of right. So you're in this, suddenly you're not in Burbank anymore. You're in this weird, dusty, like, you know, western town. And there are all these guys dressed as the, the army that have Butch and Sundance. Uh, surrounded, and then they have the and the set is just down to the little baskets and ears of corn that That's are really next cool. to, you know, that are next to Hugh. It's it's just Butch and Sundance. But we also we also shot the sitcom there that same day, so they did Butch and Sundance right. in the morning, and then Hugh took off all his stuff and got cleaned up and put on his his Charlie Sheen <laughs> bowling shirt, and we went into the sitcom set and did that later on on the, on the Universal lot, also in a stage the same day. As we were working on this, we really wanted to do a musical. We, we loved that idea, but that was, I mean, I think it was really the last flashback to sort of drop into place in the sense of, okay, you know, first of all, what song are we doing and what, what function does it need to serve? So you can't talk about the musical without talking about the amazing Mia Michaels, who... Right. Okay, we're huge, so you think you could dance, man? It was just a privilege to get to watch her... What was the, what was the moment when we were prepping it, and her... It was my, one of my favorite <laughs> the, the moments in meeting. this business, where she goes, okay, I'm gonna need three tricycles... Two megaphones and some doves. Like, right. Needless to say, not, there were no tricycles in the script, or even bicycles, or anything with any wheels and at she's all. Like, and then I'm going to need a staircase to infinity. Like, <laughs> it was like, okay, like, all right, this is going to be awesome. Our production manager, Marcy's like, so how high do we actually have to build infinity, this staircase? And we were like, she said infinity, Marcy. I don't... <laughs> 
Right. right. What's what, so confused? What, we can't quantify infinity, so we decided we want to do a new version of get of get happy. Well, that means that John or like our incredibly talented composer, he and his partner do a new you know a new arrangement of that. Then that you know is something that Greg. Which he was super stoked about, because usually he's the guy that writes the music that goes gung, 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 when like blood shoots out of someone's ass right. at the end of a right at the end of a, an right. act. So yes. he was and like, "What?" I can't. Yeah, and this this was um, required slightly different muscles. You know, it turns out that he started in musical theater. His dream was to work in musical theater. So now it, we come back and say, okay, so here, we gotta, you've got to come up with a new arrangement of this. You know, forget Judy Garland. We're doing something different. And, uh, you know, think all that jazz. And he does his arrangement, and then Greg chimes in on that, and Hugh and Lisa both chime in on that, and, we, and he works on it with, with Mia also so that it's sort of giving her the sections that she is thinking about for the dance. And then Hugh and Lisa have got to go and record all their vocals while well, doing the rest of the show and and the previous episode that all of this is happening. You know, this is all happening while the rest of the day to day business is going on in everybody's lives. Um, and uh, you know, and this is the song they came up with, which I think is fantastic. And as a little um, sneak preview, it's going to be available. The video is going to be available for free download on iTunes tomorrow. So, go get that. I think what we wanted to do as a staff with House and Cuddy is, you know, see what happens with the two these two very strong and flawed characters being involved in a relationship, and really try to have them. <clears throat> encounter the things that people go through in relationships and the obstacles they come up against. And I mean, House is an a-hole. So, you know, that's it's it, to us it was very interesting to see what is he like in a relationship, which we've never really explored before. If he's really trying to do right. his best and to act like a normal human being and to be someone's boyfriend, which I think, I mean, we all knew right from the beginning, it's obviously a doomed it's effort. He's not going to change who he is or become right. this really nice guy who's you know, Cuddy does not, Cuddy deserves way better than this guy. Like, you know, there's no way that he's going to, in the end, be able to be boyfriend slash husband, anybody that she needs right. or any woman needs in the long term. He's just not that guy. But it's interesting to see that character really try and think that maybe he's going to succeed. Right. And we're very interested. It actually lasted longer than we thought originally yeah. it was going to last because we had a lot of interesting, fun stories, stories to tell. So. But that, it, you know, that, that ultimately people can't change, and people, or it's very hard to change, and that the way House is, and the, he, the way that he is messed up, is so deeply ingrained in who he is that, you know, when things get tough, he's not going to be there. Um, and that's, you know, what we showed in this episode, that that ultimately he's only able to go on be his there. terms. Like he'll right. be there to the extent that he believes he like he. It's never what do you need? Let me do that for you. And I think if he were that guy, the show wouldn't exist. It right. wouldn't be interesting if he were able to. Right, and that of, and that he, you know, getting which I think we've dialogued to this effect that that being in a relationship with somebody means you're willing to take on their pain. Because when something bad happens to them, it it affects you, and that he's not willing to accept his own pain, really. So right, let alone he hers. Can. Yeah. Um, so I think to us, I know that the fan there are certainly fans who will be disappointed, but it feels like the the honest ending to that relationship. I, I think for the two of them to have made it work, to me doesn't doesn't feel real. So. What we, you know, I hope that we told it in an interesting way. I hope people um, enjoy the uh, enjoy the ride. Well, and definitely the repercussions are going to continue. Yeah, they still have to work together. They're still in the same hospital, so it's going to be fun to see them now try to navigate the waters after right this sort of explosion. Mm. Yeah, and see what house is like. A, back on Vicodin, and B, you know, um, in the aftermath of uh, this meltdown.